All right, we're back up and running for another one of these component videos. And uh, you would have read the description. We're talking about cam gears. This is a camshaft. Of course, your cam gear is going to fit on that side right there. This happens to be an absolutely vintage crane cam. You won't be able to see it, but it actually says crane right there. And crane doesn't make Volkswagen cams anymore. This has been sitting around. It's a paperweight. I've got it sitting in a, on top of a desk downstairs. But attached to this cam gear, sorry, to the cam, attached to my cam, I had this, which is a cam gear. And this is a, a special cam gear. So you'll notice the slots are a little bit different. This is an adjustable cam gear. These adjustable cam gears come with these guys. These are adjustable washers. Uh, this happens to be a, either a plus two or minus two. So you can take them and you can install them one way or another and advance or retard the gear relative to the camshaft. And uh, of course it comes, your kit will come with bolts. And somewhere through the years, the only thing I have left are these three. So maybe the other ones are in a box somewhere. But uh, I would suggest that if you're going to build a motor, analyze your situation, figure out what your RPMs need to be and what uh, what your camshaft is designed to do. And you can tweak it a little bit by popping these guys in. I highly recommend doing one of these things. All right. Uh, I think for the rest of this stuff, I'm going to have to go to my other camera. And uh, we're going to look at some stuff on the Internet because that's what I always do. I always bring up some Internet type stuff. So let me get the other camera going. Okay, this is aircool.net's website, and let's go in and do some reading. You can also either use straight cut cam gears for mineral friction, or you can use some old parts lying around. The 36 horsepower cam gear, which has like an intermediate slice to its helical cut. It's in between what you get for the typically fine <coughs> and straight cuts. I've never seen them. But that might be a nice, uh, interesting thing to do. However, I do take exception to what uh, he says right up here. Minimal friction. No. <coughs> you haven't reduced the friction. You just do a, do a little thought exercise on it. You can, you'll know. Your actual choice of cam gears. So this is, of course, CB's website. The racing gears. Save your money. <coughs> 100 bucks. Straight cut. If you want to do it, 85, there's better places to spend your money than that. Type 4s don't care. And here's your adjustables. Like I showed, three sets. One's going to be plus two, straight up. <coughs> Twos, fours, and straight up. And all this stuff. Anyway, this, highly recommend. 48 bucks, not bad. This is just a straight up gear. So for a few extra bucks... What is that? That's an extra 13, 14 bucks? That's not too bad. For the extra bucks, you can get yourself an adjustable gear. I recommend that. Don't do one of these. And I have no idea what they're doing over here. This is just confusing. I don't, I, I don't understand what they're doing. It's called a dial of gear cam gears. Don't go down that road. That's the one you want right there. Eagle adjustable cam gear. And you can get those from a lot of people, not just CB Performance. So, one of the other places where I periodically go is, uh, Shop Talk Forums, and we've got a straight cut cam gear section right here. So this is kind of interesting. It is full of absolutely ancient stuff. This is from 2002, so this particular thread was made a long time ago. But hey, they're straight cut cam gears. It's not like they change or anything. So what people knew back then is still what we know now. And uh, anyway, somebody decides to ask, and one of the first things you get to, of course, is a power guy. It's always the power guys. We built a drag motor. It's a drag motor. All right. Straight cut gears should spin more freely. And then he gets down into here, and here's the important part. For the $100 or so for the gear kit versus the revs gained, I wouldn't recommend it for anything but an all-out performance motor. Your mileage motor is not a performance motor. So, again, I think according to what this guy, not me, but this guy, he would recommend against it. Now, I've got other reasons to recommend against it, and that's prim my primary focus in this little video do not run straight cut cam gears. It is noisy, but at 3000 my carbs overpower the gears and the exhaust. It is loud enough that my neighbor asked me one night if I had gear drive. So yeah, they're loud. They're extremely loud. 
Let's go over to the CB Performance guys. This is from one of their, uh, one of the uh, texts of one of the articles that was in Hobby W's. And uh, of course, the CB Performance guys came up with a bunch of their components. But we read the blue line. <clears throat> it quickly became obvious on the freeway that the straight cut gears might not be the choice for someone doing a lot of highway driving. So, yeah, your mileage car does not want to have these as a result of being noisy. You have to understand that noise is energy. In this particular case, not all noise is energy, but this is energy. In order for that buzz to be there, there's got to be some kind of an energy powering it, which means noise is energy being pissed away, which is my primary reason for not doing this. You do not want to piss away energy into just useless noise. The other side is somebody says, ah, but they cut down on friction. All right, so let's take a look at the friction aspect of this. So you pop out your gears like this, and you got the helical gears. And uh, somebody will tell you when you run straight cut gears, you have a reduced surface contact area. Uh, true, but uh, there's nothing altered about the force. The force is being driven by your valve springs pushing against the lobes. So since you haven't changed anything as far as that goes, the force inside the gear itself doesn't change. So even if I've reduced the contact patch, I've increased the force. So the friction at the gear doesn't change. What you get because of the angle is a thrust, a push left to right. And this push, if I push back, I'm going to have my crankshaft pushing the other direction. So they push against each other. So you get into, let me just pop it down here on the desk. Ah, let's flip it around. There's not enough light to see it from that side. Let's go over this side. So you get there. This is, at that point, this is your thrust bearing. And what these guys are going to tell you is that I've got a reduction in friction because I'm not pushing against this bearing right here. Notice, however, this is not the only bearing. You got that bearing, you got this bearing, you got that bearing right there. You've got friction at each lobe. And you've done nothing to alter that. You've done nothing to alter the friction that's going to be here. And down in here, where they say you're going to drop your friction, I've got a thrust bearing. And the thrust bearing fits really tight down in here. Which means there's still going to be pressure. Even if you don't push as hard, there's still pressure. And uh, we've got a tight fit. We've got oil pressure in here. The oil pressure comes out from underneath the cam bearing and fills up the surfaces. So this ends up becoming... It's not a metal-to-metal -metal contact surface. Like this would be metal-to-metal -metal contact, essentially, down in here. So this is a different type of friction. What you've got here is a hydraulic shearing friction with the oil. And no matter how much you reduce this friction, you've still got that oil in there. And you've still got a friction shear force that's going on. And even if you push really, really hard on it, that's the one great thing about these oils. You push really hard, you still get the same friction. You have to push, push massively hard in order to have some kind of an impact on that oil friction shearing surface. And if you're running a mileage motor with a you know, lightweight valve springs, and this, this is the source of your force, you know, this is trying to push up. And when you try and push these up, <coughs> you have to push against this. This is angled. You've got that. Hopefully you don't have a big low, big, big lobes on these things. Don't have big fat valve springs. Not necessary for a mileage motor you're not going to get a lot of thrust, and you're not going to get enough thrust to take it to the point where you go from this nice, relaxed, uh, oily surface down in here with low friction. So, you do not, for us, reduce your friction by stu you know, stuffing in straight-cut cam gears, cam gears. They're just, they're the choice of the high-performance racer. you got your doubles and your triple valve springs, and you want to, you know, save your components a bit, well, let's face it, by the time you've gotten to those heavy-duty valve springs, you're typically running really big lobes in here. You're going to start getting some force, and you're going to smash your cam bearings. Uh, this thing is just, it's not designed for that much force, so that's why the racers do it. And I think it's a good idea for them, but it's not that they're saving themselves any friction. They're saving themselves wear. So, that gets us to where we need to be. You're not saving yourself any friction. All you're doing is making noise. 
and noise is energy being pissed away. Um, you know, another thing you have to understand about that, that noise, that vibration noise, that has to be transmitted in through the entire component train. Everything in your entire valve train is feeling that. And uh, it's going to run up into your, your lifters are going to feel it, your push rods are going to feel it, your valve springs are going to feel it. So that vibration is going to make its way all the way up to the tip of your valve train. And vibration, and not necessarily the spring forces, but vibration is what causes your valve float. So that vibration at the very top end, when you're getting close to the point where you're going to valve float, the vibration is going to cause your valve float. Your valve springs are probably still good, but your straight cuts and the vibration are going to cause you problems. So that takes care of the cam gears. Go helical and go adjustable. That's where you want to be. Thanks for watching.